It's the season of the dead. Whether you're celebrating Obon in July and August, or whether you are celebrating Halloween or any of the other you know, fright times that comes with it, today's energy has got your back with the very frightening voodoo flavor. If you want an energy drink that gives you all of the energy that normal energy drinks do with none of the kickback, then today's energy with the voodoo flavor is good for you. Be sure to follow the link in the description below and if you use the promo code SOLDIER88, you will get 15% off all your purchases along with giving some of your soul to me. I missed this opportunity. This is a limited edition drink and you will not be here forever. Thank you very much for watching and here is the video. Hello! Welcome to this week's edition of the Time Travel Theory with your host Matthew Salzer. Now, as you can see, I'm doing something a tad bit different here. I'm talking about something that is not necessarily time travel, but it's within that concept. And it's something that obviously people wouldn't necessarily think about. It's an alternate theory idea. And what we are going to do with this, and keep in mind this is an experiment, this might be an ongoing thing, but we'll just have to see. What we are going to do today is go over the office. Specifically, what would happen if Scranton actually closed. So for those of you who don't know in the office, it covers a paper company called Dunder Mifflin and being that this was in the early 2000s, we had just had the bubble, we just had a recession and things were not looking good in terms of corporate America. So what the Dunder Mifflin company is doing in terms of the story is looking to downsize and they were trying to choose whether to downsize between Scranton, Pennsylvania and Stanford, Connecticut. Now initially the idea was that they were going to close the Scranton branch and fold it into the Stanford branch, but what ended up happening is that Stanford manager Josh Porter ultimately decided to go to Staples. He specifically used his job in order to leverage a higher job in Staples management. This resulted in ultimately Stanford being the one that closed and the employees from that branch being folded into the Scranton branch. Uh, I seriously doubt that that there was any consideration of possibly doing that. The only thing that I read was that idea that maybe they were going to have Jim stay at Stanford a little bit longer. There was always the plan to bring him back to Scranton. But let's just think about this idea in universe, even though that probably is not what was going to happen on the show. And let's remember that the only thing that needs to happen in order for this plan to go through is Josh does not use the regional manager job at Stanford to leverage into a Staples job. He does not do this. As a result, Scranton does close. The branch employees are merged into Stanford and the concept called Thunder Mifflin Northeast is created. Now what we're specifically going to focus on today is what employees would have been the ones who would have been folded into Stanford. Now before we start theorizing, let's talk about what we actually do know about the plans that were going forward because a lot of them were not finalized but some of them were. There's three things we do know. We do know that Michael, based on what Jan said, was going to get a severance package. Toby had already been informed and already been told that he was going to get a severance package as well and we know that the warehouse workers were going to come work for Vance King of Vance Refrigeration. Not sure if he was just going to get the warehouse or if he was going to just hire the guys. I'm not exactly sure what was happening but either way the warehouse workers themselves were all going to work for Vance so they were going to have jobs there to be taken care of. As for the rest of them we obviously have to theorize based on who was brought over from Stanford. So who all was brought over from Stanford? Well we had Jim Halpert who became the assistant regional manager. We had Karen Phil Pelly, who was in sales. We had Annie Bernard, who was in sales. And then, depending on the source, either Tony Gardner was some kind of unknown employment, or he was in the sales department as well. Then you had Hannah Smotrick Barr, which I'm just going to refer to as Hannah from this point. And you had Martin Nash. Now, Hannah was an accountant, and Martin Nash was a supply relations representative. So, who were those equivalent people? 
in the Scranton branch. Well, in sales at the time that this merger was going to take place, we had Dwight Schrute, we had Stanley Hudson, we had Phyllis, and we had Ryan Howard. Then with supply relations, we had one person, that was Meredith Palmer. However, when we get to accounting, there were three options. We had three accountants in Scranton. We had Kevin, Oscar, Angela. So we're going to go with a pretty obvious one right here. The most likely thing is that if the plan was to always transfer the supply relations person, then Meredith is a shoe in She's going if she so chooses. But then after that, we start to get into some more complicated things because of how accounting was structured and also because of how the sales demographic was at Scranton. However, let's just go with some obvious ones. Pam Beasley, she's receptionist. She's getting a severed package. Kelly Kapoor, customer service representative, most likely getting a severance package. Creed, likely getting a severance package, not to mention he's old, so he's of retirement age anyways. So since we got those people out of the way, let's talk about some of the complicated things when we come to, first of all, accounting. Now it's a question of, do you want to keep someone who's more expensive, do you want to go with someone lower, or do you want to do it maybe a little bit more based off of performance? Because then thing to remember is that Kevin was eventually fired because of the fact that his accounting was not always on track. But we have to assume that he's going to get a severance package. So that leaves one of two people. Is it going to be Angela or is it going to be Oscar? Now, by all accounts, they were good managers. And of course, after Angela quit towards the end of the show, Oscar would become the head of the department. Now, if it was between those two, to be perfectly honest, I think it's going to be Angela because as the head of the department, she would have that priority. Most likely, she would be the one heading over. So based off of that, Oscar is probably going to get a severance package. Then we get into the complicated demographics of the sales team. Now, the one, the only person that is the most obvious, most likely Dwight is going to get transferred over and he's probably going to take it. Sure, he's got the farm, but I think there's things can be worked out to where he could probably get it at least managed. So most likely he is probably going to go over and he's still going to have a rivalry with Andy on whether, you know, who's the number three in the office because number two is obviously Jim. Now, then we get into th the three re remaining representatives and that is Brian Howard, Stanley Hudson, and Phyllis King. Now, while Brian is a sales representative, it has been said multiple times throughout that season, season three, that he has not made a single sale. Now, the question is, did he inherit Jim's clients or did he have to go on his own and Jim took them all to Stanford? Now, the question there, is he just not making any new sales or is he just not making any sales, period? Is he losing clients? Did he have to start out fresh? Is he literally just buying a spot? I want to say based on the fact that is constantly said that he makes no sales that most likely he is going to be seen as a sense of dead weight and he's going to be given a severance package so again bye bye right here and is where we get into the more complicated one between phyllis and stanley because here is the thing stanley was constantly saying once he got the news that he would like to retire he eventually does retire at the end of the series about five years after he's been constantly saying that he'd retire but the thing is he is in a situation where he is of retirement age. Now the question is, does the company want to keep him or do they want to just give him the retirement bonus, especially if he's just going to go off anyways. Either way, he's not going to be very sad about it. He's straight up said he wants to retire. He'd take the package and he retire. I am say that he is probably going to be given the option of going to Scranton, the severance package, but he wanting to retire is probably just going to take the severance package and ride off into the sunset. Please, Phyllis. One thing also to keep in mind with regards to the four people that transferred from Stanford to Scranton is the whole idea. All these people are clearly no later than their late 30s, which is a factor. The people that are being transferred over are people who have the potential to be with the company for a while look to the future and that is the whole idea that eventually becomes the head of the sales team end of the series to remember that Michael Scott was in his 40s the same graduating class as Phyllis so Phyllis has to be assumed to be in her 40s At retirement age you could still get some time out of her I'm willing to say that most likely she would have been extended a severance package the question is does she want to move that far away from Bob Vance in order to take this? I am just going to leave her up in the air. 
everyone else was most likely yes or no's, but I would say that she is a big old mystery block. It made it seem like she wanted the job, so it's likely that if she was offered the job, she would have taken it. It just would have been one of those things where she would have worked it out with Bob. Considering they were together the whole time that they were married on the show, I'd say that most likely they'd be able to make it work. So that's something a little bit different. For watching, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought. Let me know what you think of this format, because I've been thinking about maybe just doing something like this in terms of my time travel from here on out. Max Solder, both my Twitter and my Instagram. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.